right? Are we on? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, super, thank you. Nice. How are you doing? Last day of NDC. Been good? good. Yeah. Like it? Yeah. Go to the party last night. <laughs> good to see you all here. Or like, see, I can see like the front two rows, and then there's like just lights. Um, welcome to monitoring and alerting like a pro with Azure Monitor and Application Insights. Uh, my name is Stefan Yugut, it's a mouthful. My Icelandic, I'm going to tell a little bit about myself. I am a senior software engineer at CCB Games, where I work on EVE Online. I've also been a Microsoft MVP in developer technology since 2020, and I am a Have I Been Pwned code maintainer. I'm assuming most of you know what Have I Been Pwned is, or is there anyone that don't, doesn't know what it is? Right, a few people, maybe. Got some stickers in front, you can confess them afterwards. I have a blog, uh, it's the QR code if you wanna scan it. You can find me on Twitter as well. But if we get back to the subject, what is Azure Monitor and Application Insights? These are the official Microsoft descriptions of them. Azure Monitor is sort of like the base layer that Application Insights builds on top on. Um, like just to put it simply, it's a, it's a service that helps you know what your applications and servers are doing, uh, if they're running like even if they're running in the cloud or on premises. So how does this help you do your job? Well, to know what our applications are doing and how they are performing, we need to know certain things, uh, and this is what Application Insights is very good at doing. It, for example, it knows about incoming requests. It can know about the exceptions that your applications are throwing. All the dependency calls they make, for example, database calls, outgoing HTTP requests if you're talking to third-party APIs. It could be Redis queries. Uh, you can put your logs in there as well. And then you can get sort of host metrics or server-side metrics, uh, also from the runtime. So you can put in CPU counters, memory counters, and if you're using .NET, all sorts of runtime counters like uh, garbage collection statistics. But the way this all comes together within Application Insights is it uses tracing and correlation to group these things together where they make sense. So when you're looking at individual requests, for example, coming into your website, you can see that that request made two database calls, one Redis query, and talked to some APIs. Now, we're gonna take a look at that a little bit later. It's not just for .NET or web apps, that's a thing I you hear quite a lot that people think it's just, it's just for those, it's not. There are officially supported packages for a lot of programming languages, .NET, Node, Java, Python, JavaScript, and more. And there are also third-party packages for other languages available. Uh, you can use any desktop apps, console apps, background apps, services that are running, doesn't really matter. And the documentation that Microsoft has for this is very good, at least to get people started. So just sort of to give you an idea, we're gonna just do a short demo of adding application insights to an existing web application. Now, I've already created this application, so if you go ahead and, and scan that QR code and test it out, it can actually help us get some metrics we'll use on later in the demo. So I'm just gonna, while you do that, I'm gonna go to Visual Studio, and we're gonna take a look at what we do. So, to start with, of course, we need a new good package. I could just go ahead and do this. Can, I, can everybody see this, by the way? Okay, I could go ahead and do this, but that's not fun. Um, so let's do this the manual way. So I will go and find Microsoft Application Insights for ASP.NET Core. This is an ASP.NET Core application. Install it. Uh, yes, please. And what happens is we just got this package reference. That's pretty much all it needs. What we need to do as well is we need to hook it up. So I have already created an application insights resource in Azure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the connection string, put that in here as well. Application, oops, insights. Da -da. 
go. At connection string. Better do this correctly. Mm -hmm. Like so. So that should be connection string. And then we need to set it up. Go into our startup file. If you're familiar with ASP.NET Core, you should probably recognize most of this. Services, add application insights telemetry. And we're pretty much done, at least for the server side. But like I mentioned before, uh, application insight supports not just Node.js, but JavaScript as well. So we can actually, it's not required, this would be enough for us to see what our server or application is doing on the server side. But I am going to add this to my page as well. So I can inject it pretty similar to Google Analytics. It's not doesn't have like the same feature set, but we can get telemetry from the browsers as well. So I'm going to do this. Application insights. ASP.NET Core, JavaScript snippet. And I'm just going to put this into my head tag. There we go. Raw because this is already gives me the entire script that I need. Full script. Save this and we should be done. And let's see it build. It's always better. Succeeded. So we run this. Da, 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 da. We get our site. Similar to what we saw earlier. It's always bad when you click phishing emails. So let's see if let's see if they have my password in here. Super secret. Yep. Maybe that's not a very good password, is it? So if we go back to Visual Studio, we're gonna see this. We have already received seven instances of telemetry from App Insights just running locally. And we can see what it's doing. For example, we see our post. I have to refresh here. And if we scroll down, it's just a short overview. This is the post that was made when I clicked the button on my website. And you see this little thing here. There's a dependency in there. So this is Application Insights automatically linking together the external HTTP call that was made to the Pwn Passwords API to my request. And I can see that the dependency took 238 milliseconds or happened at 238 milliseconds. If I look at it closely, I can see the duration for it. And let's fix this window a little bit. And we can even see that it was what URL it connected to, what the status code was, and I can see that it was an HTTP request. So this is just like a, this is basically how easy it is to get started. Add a reference, add the connection string, register the service during startup, and in our case, we added the browser side JavaScript. is isn't really needed, but it's a, it's a good extra thing to have. So there are a lot of cool features we get out of this once it's up and running. And if we take a look at those features, we can look at the application inside dashboards. Like I said, I already created the resource, and it's been running. So if we want to look at, and one of my favorite things to get out of this is the application map. When Application Insights is running and it monitors your application, it can actually start showing you what your application is connected to. In our case, we have an instance here. This is the instance running in Azure currently. And we can see that it's connected to the API at pwnpasswords.com. And because you guys scanned the QR code and probably tried it out, we've already made 68 calls over there, and the average response time for it is 100 milliseconds. So this is a very quick bird's eye overview that Application Insights gives you of your application. If I was connecting to a database, I would see that popping up here as well. Now we get this window as well. This is the, this is the client telemetry that we're getting from your browsers. I can see that it is connecting to localhost because that's what I, because I was running it locally and to the instance running on that URL. Now, more things. 
Live metrics. This is also one of my favorites. When you hook application insights up to your service and it starts running, you can get this live metric overview. And I can see that the Azure server is running and my laptop right here. So if I go back, because it's still running, and I do another one, I head back, I'm going to see requests coming in. And this is real-time data coming from my browser and the laptop as well. Another thing that is really good out of the box is you can start looking at performance, the performance of your application. And this is data that Application Insights just gives me straight out of the box with its ASP.NET integration. Here's the endpoint that you guys have been calling. And I can take a look at it and see a distribution of the response times. And I can also start looking at the dependencies. Here are the calls that have been made, external APIs. And we can start looking at samples. Now, when I told you that it correlates all these things, we saw it in Visual Studio. If I click a sample in here, App Insights is going to give me the request that was made and the dependency it called and when it happened. Like, if it was making more dependencies, I would just see this, see more lines in here. And once your application, if you set it up in a way to expose, for example, custom events, you'll see these popping in there as well. And you get all this nice data on the side, seeing like what endpoint was being called, the path, the duration. They even keep track of if it's a successful call or not. So, and a thing closely related to that is failure investigation. Now, there's a bug in the website. I'm assuming some of you guys found it already. If not, I can show you what it is. So if, if I don't type anything, wait a minute, nope, that's the one locally. So go to the real one. It is. If I don't type anything, we get an error because I'm not doing input validation. So going back, we can see that we are getting failures in our application. And it's automatically seeing what kind of failures there are. If I just look at the last 30 minutes, we've gotten quite a few of them. Now, it, like I said, it's automatically picking up the exceptions being thrown and showing them to me right in the dashboard. So I can click this. It says string reference not set to an instance of a string, which makes sense. And I look at it, and similar to the performance trace I got, I'm now seeing a trace for the failure. So it's like all marked in red. It returned the 500, threw an exception at this point in time, and I not only get that, I get the stack trace. So I can immediately start seeing what's wrong with my application without having to press F5 myself and seeing what's being thrown. I can see that this is happening like right there in my code. So that's the failures. All right, let's go out here. There is one other thing that happens. We have metrics as well. Like I said, App Insights by default collects a lot of metrics, for example, CPU st statistics and more things. And we can even see, I can start looking at the browser page load time because I added the script. I can look at client processing time. That's like how long your browser is taking to like execute JavaScript on the page. Like if I had a lot of it, these would be metrics that I would be wanna keep track of. So out of the box, it gives you it gives you a lot of things that you don't really you don't really have to do a lot of work to get this. Application maps, metrics, failures, performance, and there are also all the things in there which we'll get to later. But we can also add more metrics. For example, in our case, we're running on .NET, and this website, let's say it's receiving a lot of traffic, and we might want to add some runtime metrics from .NET. So I can go in here, and I'm just gonna copy this snippet because I'm just gonna go gung-ho and add all the metrics in the world. Now, there's a lot. I didn't want to type this all out manually. .NET, built into .NET are, for example, a lot of counters that it keeps track of 
uh, in the .NET runtime. For example, like the time it's spending on garbage collection, the allocation rate, how much CPU is using. And if you have like a really highly concurrent application, it keeps track of, for example, lock attention counts, thread pool queue lengths, how many items have been run from the thread pool. So these are the kind of statistics you'd be looking at for a highly concurrent application. But it also gives us, for example, hosting metrics, current number of requests, requests per second, how many of them failed in total. And getting all these metrics added in there is pretty easy. Uh, these are, it's not, it's not exactly intuitive to find out what these metrics are, but they are documented on Microsoft's site, so that's pretty much where I picked all of these up. But adding them is simply, I go to configure telemetry module. In this case, there are a lot of modules within Application Insights. One of them is the event counter collector. And I'm telling it what to collect. Now, when I run this, it's going to start the application just like it did. And I'm just going to create some activity. Oh, that's a bad one. So if you go back, the metrics are, they are not pushed to application insights. Like I said, these are internal counters. So application insights, by default, just every 60 seconds, it's going to get a snapshot of those metrics and send them up to the application insights ingestion points. So as this timeline here approaches 60 seconds, we've already just, we've just received seven items on telemetry. This number is going to drop, uh, jump up pretty dramatically. We're at 11 now. And let's see when it hits 60 seconds. And we should see a very hefty jump here. Mm -hmm, exciting. There we go. Jumped up. And if we take a look at them, we can see these are the metrics that I was requesting when I set it up. For example, current connections, one. It's probably because it's just the one I'm running locally. So it keeping track of all of these, aggregates them together, and sends them up to the application inside service. So adding them is pretty easy to do. It's also like if, you're, if you have a .NET application that's perhaps big and complex, you might want to be exposing some of these. They're like your own metrics, not just the ones from the runtime. That's uh, another subject altogether. So you can gather all these helpful statistics, for example, to help you out with an application that's receiving heavy load. So in that case, you would be looking at metrics that help you do that, for example, garbage collections. Now, there's no use in gathering all this data if we're not going to do anything with it. Otherwise, it's just sitting there and we're paying a lot of money for nothing, right? So. We need to create some sort of monitoring. Uh, we need to create some sort of alerts or dashboard because what use of a dashboard if, if no one's looking at it, right? So let's see if we can combine these things. So if I go back here to my application insights instance, one of the things that it has is, for example, availability. So Availability test is basically pinging your website and seeing if it's returning values that it should be doing. For example, like if our website goes offline, then it's probably going to time out. Or if we have an error, it's going to start returning 500s. So let's do a very simple test. Just saying, am I down? Not sown, down. We're going to let it ping our website. And we're going to have it retry if it fails. It can also do SSL certificate validation. So have any of you ever had like an SSL certificate expire in a, in a live application and all your users just say like they get a big red screen in Chrome? This will help you prevent that. Like ideally you'd automate this, but if you can't, like this is a good thing to have. We're going to test this every five minutes from five locations. Now it automatically picks geographically distributed locations. So in this case, it's going to do a request from South Central US, East US, East Asia, 
Central US and Australia. I think it, it sort of picks these at random, but still tries to at least distribute it. And it's going to do a standard GET request. We can add custom headers if we want uh, to the request. And here's the success criteria. Uh, we don't need 120 second timeout. Let's put that down to 30. It should return at 200. But I want to make sure that my page is returning what it should be returning. So I'm going to do a content match. And if we go back to our site, let's make sure that it's returning this string. So I copy that. I'm going to say it should contain welcome and this year's low 2022 and create. So while this is creating, let me show you something else we can do. Because this uh, sometimes takes a few minutes. I was showing you the metrics earlier. Now we can take these metrics that we have and we can actually create uh, a dashboard pretty easily. Now these are all the runtime metrics that we're getting, but let's get some of the standard ones. Let's say we can want to get exceptions. So this will give me the exceptions that our application is throwing. And if I want to put this up in a dashboard, I can simply do this and let's create a new one and BC demo and we now have a dashboard with our exception counts. I could go back and add some more. Let's take for example requests. I think we can search here. Requests server requests. Save the dashboard, let's pin it to this one. Here it is. Now, this is one of those strangely annoying Azure things. I have no idea why they just didn't put this at the side. They tend to put it at the bottom. So let's fix that real quick. There, and it's looking much better. Now, dashboards can be shared. Uh, we're not going to go into that in detail, but this is how easy it is to at least create them. So I'm going to go back and see. We should have our availability test running as well. Yep. Here's the availability test we created, and it's successful. And you can even see the durations it took to contact the website from all these locations. Now it's going to be running these availability tests every five minutes, and it will let me know if any of them fail. But we'll get to that later as well. So we can combine these monitors and alerts, create dashboards out of them, create an alert when our site goes down, put some standard request and browser metrics. Yeah, I forgot those. Show you those later as well. Those are pretty cool. But it's all great, but like these are just standard things, right? We might have we might have some custom thing that like either custom events or metrics that we want to put in there, and we might want to query those instead. So if that's not part of the standard features in there, what can we do about that? We, like, we might want to aggregate things differently. So in that case, we need to be familiar with Kusto. Kusto is the query language used in Azure Monitor and Application Insights. And pretty much everything Azure Monitor and Application Insight does ends up being a Kusto query somewhere. It's a, like I said, it's a query language. It's similar to SQL in many, many regards. The syntax is not exactly the same, but it has pretty much all the same features, like filtering, like where statements, has what it calls projections. That's your your select statements, and you can do aggregations. And it's it's like it's really a rabbit hole if you start looking at the documentation because they have so many cool functions in there. For example, like if you let's say you have a travel website, and like every spring people start looking at travels, they want to book something. They even have like machine learning functions in there that take, like that do predictions and forecasting based on seasonality. Uh, like I've not used those a lot, but those are the kind of things that you can like completely get lost into when you, when you start looking at this. So if you want to add some custom custom queries to a dashboard, we can do that as well. So let's go back here. And what I'm going to do 
is gonna create like a custom exception dashboard. So everything application inside does ends up in what's called the log analytics workspace. That's sort of like the data storage for Azure Monitor and application insights. And they have this thing called logs. And there we can actually create custom queries. Log management is pretty much the database that application insights ends up sending things into. And here you can see all the things that App Insights is gathering, browser timings, availability results, dependencies and events. And we can start querying these things and even joining them together. But just to do this simply, I'm gonna paste this in here. We're gonna fetch our app exceptions, but I'm doing like, yeah, I'm gonna explain this. Like, it's basically the, the table we're, we're selecting from. And every part of the query is separated by a pipe. But in this case, I'm filtering the exception and I'm only taking exceptions where the assembly is not unknown. Now the reason is .NET, everything, every exception .NET throws has an assembly or DLL associated with it. But because we added the browser JavaScript, browsers don't have assemblies. So application insights automatically gonna like put unknown into all exceptions that come from the browser. So we're filtering those out. I just wanna get the .NET exceptions. So I'm gonna summarize those exceptions and give me a count for every five minutes. And I want it to group it based on exception type. So if we run this, we will get data that looks kind of like this. So at one point, we were getting nine exceptions. We were getting two, one, and we can put this up in a chart if we want to, and it's already grouped. And once we start experimenting with this, we can actually go ahead and pin this sort dashboard. There we go. Uh, yep, don't wanna save this query. Now we have our exception statistics in there, grouped by exception type. So, let's do one thing as well. We have this, you can always go back and edit the query if you want, in case you wanna change the dashboard so you, you, you're not stuck with whatever you did at that point. So, got acquainted with Kusto, see how it works. The log query tools, the log query tools are also really nice. They have like good intelligence to tell you, like show you what functions you can use, et cetera. Track that data and add that to our dashboard. But the dashboard is only useful if it's actually doing something. And like I said, what good is a dashboard if no one's looking at it? So let's have Azure Monitor look at it, right? So we have our dashboard. There we go, All right? Yep, discard this. <coughs> so what I can do here is I can use any of the charts or, or any of the uh, panels I have in my dashboard as baselines for any alerts that I might wanna create. If I just take the exceptions one as an example, I can open up the query again and I can click this button, new alert rule. Click this. And it's gonna show us our query. And in this case, we wanna create an alert out of this query. We're gonna, it's automatically measuring the count that's returned here. Takes the total, aggregates it every five minutes. So I'm gonna say if we get, let's just say if we get an exception within the last five minutes, but I want it to evaluate it every minute. So that means that this monitor, every minute is gonna run that query and if it sees an exception in the last five minutes, it's gonna trigger an alert. So here is example data that it shows you for the last 30 minutes, and this is really good to use. For example, if you, if you have a metric that you wanna follow, but it, like, it's fluctuating, you can actually take this and look at it for like, I wanna see like the last three days. I can't do it in this case because I don't have that much, have that um, amount of data. But then you can say like, look for anomalies and say, okay, if, if my value exceeds a certain threshold, I'm gonna trigger the alert. 
So then we need an action. I can say I've already created an action group, which should send me an email, as well as send me a push notification if I have the Azure app installed on my phone. Click that. These are the details. I want this to be a warning. Like, oh, no exceptions. There we go. And I wanted to just create it. So this is going to create the alert once everything's ready. And that, like after I've created this now, because we have exceptions, my phone should probably notify me in a bit. Now, the alerts are not fully real time because they're like there are ingestion times involved. So we should get I should get a notification here soonish. So we can take the query that we create or that we already have on our dashboard. We can look at what it's doing, decide upon a threshold that we want to use, and then start alerting based on those. Uh, you saw that we had like an alert group in there. So alerts are organized so you can create different groups and different alerts can notify different groups. You can like notify more than one group. So for example, like if your site stops responding, send a notification to the SREs. If you get like a number of exceptions exceeding a certain threshold, like send that directly to the developers. Or you can also look at things like if if I'm not getting any traffic to my payment page, if I'm uh, if I'm selling something, I want like we stop receiving any payments, notify the CFO, for example. So these are the kind of things you can do. But Alerts are not just notifications. I just use notifications in this, in this instance, but it also has triggers. So it can have webhooks. So you can hook those alerts up to Slack, uh, hook it up to Teams, or things like PagerDuty. Like you can send emails, text messages. Uh, <coughs> text messages is not, does not work for all countries, uh, not voice calls either, but emails work, and the push notifications in the app. So you're, you, you can pretty much do whatever you want in there. And for example, if you have a webhook, then you can send JSON payloads. So you can tell it like, because for example, Teams expects a certain, uh, certain JSON format to come in, and then you can get like, you can even, in some instances, you can inject the dashboard chart itself into the alert coming into a third application. So, it's not perfect though. Uh, they're, the monitors and the alerts are cheap, they're not free, uh, but in this case the alert I created costs like three bucks a month, I think. And like I said, it's not quite real time. Ingestion times for telemetry can be from like 30 seconds up to a few minutes. And there we go, notification on my phone. Oh, a few of them actually, right, cool. It's working. Um, so there's another thing though, like I've just been showing you the Azure portal and the Azure portal is quirky. Uh, everyone that's used it probably knows what I'm talking about. But since Azure Monitor has an API, we can hook this up to something like Grafana. And Grafana actually has very good Azure Monitor support. So there we can like get better visualizations and dashboards. And even Grafana has alerting options of its own. So you're, like, you're not stuck with having to use the alerts that the Azure portal wants to give you. If you have if you already have something like Grafana and are already using it for alerting, you can do that and not pay extra for the alerts in Azure. In, in that case, you're only, like, you're only paying for like, the data ingested into Application Insights as well as API calls, but the API calls aren't that expensive. So if we take a look at how we would query Azure Monitor Logs using Grafana, I have a Grafana instance running. Now, this is Azure Managed Grafana. I don't know if many of you know this. They actually added, we go here, create a resource in case you don't have it. You can do this. I think it's, I think it's still in preview, um, but you can create a Grafana instance and Azure will automatically take care of adding the Azure Monitor data source and hooking it up. If you just want to get started, want to experiment with this, but if you already have a Grafana instance running, Adding the Azure Monitor data sources is pretty easy as well. 
So what we get out of Azure Managed Grafana, like I said, is it already creates a very basic dashboard. We can look at, go to Browse, Azure Monitor. We can start looking at our applications. And we already get a pretty, pretty good looking dashboard out of this. And this is just what comes out of the box. But then like, you can use this as a, as a baseline and start customizing things. For example, like here, I'm seeing like browser page load time breakdown. I'm seeing like how long it's taking to process, how much time the send requests are taking, and like how long the browser has to wait for the page to respond. And then basically getting this for free. This is just this is just data that I added by adding the JavaScript snippet and everything else. It was, it was pretty much like four lines of code. So 88 users, tons of things, but we might want to do something like creating our own. If I create a new dashboard, add a new panel, let me show you this real quick. Pick a data source as your monitor. And let's say I want to just start with the metrics. I need to find my, my app service. Here it is. I think it's this one. Check the inside components. And we can start looking at things like HTTP request rate. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, it doesn't want to load it. Oh, see, did I pick the wrong one? Yeah, I might have picked the wrong one. Let's look for request. Uh, requests in here. For example, we can start at this thing, there we go. So these are, for example, these are the outgoing requests that my app, my own application is making. So we can add this, give it a title saying outgoing requests, apply, got that going. But we're not just limited to using metrics, we can also use acoustic queries. If I go in here and I pick logs instead of metrics, I search quicker that way, we will get the log analytics workspace. And we can do things like this. Our application, I added this earlier, like not in this demo, but earlier today. I'm exposing metrics for the have up and pwn calls. And I'm picking out or exposing as an event within Application Insights whenever I get a hit or if I don't get a hit. So I'm taking the events, looking for the have a been pwned event, which I created, and I have a property that says, is that a hit or not? So I'm gonna take where, the, where we actually get a hit and I'm gonna see how many times that password is breached. So I should be able to put this up in a graph as well as it loads, there we go. It's not the prettiest graph because password might be breached a thousand times and then a million times, so like the scaling gets all out of whack. But those are the kind of things that we can pretty easily do. But if you want to customize this, uh, have any of you used Grafana before? It's pretty handy. You can turn this into a bar chart. It's a little bit like bigger. It's a little bit nicer to look at. So, it's easy to add into third-party tools because we have the APIs. Query metrics, query logs, simple to set up dashboards. But we can do more things if we, when we have time. So I already prepared this one because otherwise this would probably take ages. We can have something like uh, discard this. And we can start looking at, for example, I create a basic one. Just takes the requests, response times, displays that, server health. I have a more advanced one. And these are the kind of cool things that I love being able to do. Is I can start seeing advanced things like AppDex. AppDex is a metric that you can create like 
I can say I expect my website to respond in 50 milliseconds. So there are calculations that can be made saying, like, okay, you are, it, it kind of, I think it does like four times that time, then a user is frustrated, but if it exceeds uh, four times, your expected response time is gonna say that the user is like, yeah, frustrated or satisfied. And it gives you a score, so I can say, okay, in my case, I'm expecting everything to return in 50 milliseconds, which is really, really low. So our post is not hitting that at all because like the 50th percentile is 73 milliseconds. But I also get these, I get CPU usage. I even, I'm even getting a CPU usage from my laptop because I hooked that up earlier and I was running it. So it's kind of cool like seeing that pop up in a cloud instance somewhere. Get the response times, I can group those and an exception chart similar to what we already had. But one of the awesome things that I've seen that we can do is I can make this clickable and actually get details on just that endpoint. So I'm seeing like performance statistics and all this data is just being pulled out of Azure Monitor. Like this is, this is not something fancy I had to create. But behind all of this, if I look at it, it's just a Custo query. Although like it's a bit complicated one, but it's just a Custo query just like anything else. So I could even take this query, put that into the Azure portal and get a very similar looking dashboard in there. So I'm not, I'm not limited to using just whatever is either in the portal or in some other application. And like I said, Grafana has its own alerting. I could start creating notifications outside of Grafana. Grafana has support for a lot of things like Discord, emails, Google Hangouts, uh, PagerDuty, Teams, and everything else. So that's also a, a thing that many people think, like they think that if they're using application insights that they need to use application insights. You can use application insights pretty much just as a data store and use whatever monitoring tool you have as long as you're using the API. And the API in the end is just, I think it's pretty much just JSON requests. So if we, if we recap this, we can see that like adding, adding support for this is it's relatively easy, not a lot of work, at least not in the case of an ASP.NET Core application. I think Node.js is similar, like you add a, an NPM package and at the uh, server startup, I think you add like one line and maybe like put the connection string in there. So if you have any questions, please like bring them, bring them in. Um, the uh, thing that I get asked about a lot is like how expensive this is. Uh, it's not it's not that expensive. Of course, it depends on how much data you're putting in there. Um, I think by default, Azure or App Insights stores 90 days worth of data, and I, you pay per gigabyte. So you can you can pretty much decide how much you're paying because you can do sampling, for example. If you have a high throughput application, like immediately you'd be getting tons of data in there, but you can configure application insights to do, do sampling for you, even adaptive sampling. So like when you're getting a small amount of requests, it's basically giving you all the data for those, but if, if you start hitting spikes, it's just gonna take like every 10th request and it does that automatically. So yeah, if you have any questions, like bring them in. It's kind of hard to see because I lights are through my face. Sorry. Yeah. Um, that's really not part of application insights, but Azure Monitor has support for it. Yes, you can put custom logs in there. So you can you can I think currently they have they have an HTTP endpoint. So the question is, uh, just to recap, like, could you send JSON logs in there, for example? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, the event counters, for example. Yeah. I think you can, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, anyone else?
show you. So the question is, I didn't put a connection string when I was adding the, uh, you, you're talking about the JavaScript snippet I added, yeah. So I didn't put any configuration there. So how does it know? Well, if we go back uh, in here, still running. So we added the snippet here, JavaScript snippet. And what happens here is this is injecting, this is injecting um, a class that comes from the application instance library. And this class is automatically picking up the configuration from my startup because they server-side rendered, right? So when I execute this full script, if I go to view source, right? that's not it, right? Go to view page source, what's this? Right, no, it's a post, God damn it. okay. There we go. This is a script that gets injected, right? This is what happens, and you can see, here's my connection string. Now where did it pick that up from is this one, because I added it when I added the NuGet package. I had to add the connection string into the configuration file to get this to post the data. And that's how the JavaScript knows where to send it. You mean like sending telemetry data from the browser? From the browser. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we can. Like it, it sends a lot of them by default, like I said, it sends the processing time and everything else. You can, if you look at the documentation, just gonna go and find it. Uh, I can never remember where it is. Monitor, you can. If you start looking at it, I think you have like JavaScript, client side JavaScript in here. You can add the SDK. Like you, you, you don't have to use the snippet that it did. You can just take the snippet and edit it yourself if you want, if you have specific configurations. So yeah, let me repeat the question again. It was asking like if we can put like besides default metrics that the JavaScript snippet does, can we add our own? So yes, you can do that because App Insights loads up here. This is, for example, the Node one. Add an NPM package and add a few lines. And then the snippet, you have these things here. And I'm pretty sure that you can configure a lot of things. And you can also put in initializers. For example, if you want to add other properties to the telemetry that's being sent, you can configure that by saying, like, I want you to add, for example, like a message or I want you to add like a property saying like like which IP is this user coming from. And there are a lot of properties in there that you can configure both for the connection string as well as any custom metrics that you might be sending pretty much. So you can hook you can hook into the clients, both both the ASP.NET one or the .NET one and the JavaScript one, they have injection points where you can augment the telemetry that is being sent with like your own custom properties if you want. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, take one question. What do you say? Um, I, I'm not sure what the pricing model is for Grafana. Uh, that's the pricing model in the Azure portal, I think. I'm pretty sure alerts are just, if you're using either Grafana Enterprise or the cloud version, I think alerting is included, but someone might correct me on that if I'm wrong. I think it's just part of the package there. So like I said, like you're not forced to use the Azure ones. You'll, you'll just be paying for the API calls then instead, but they're like a lot cheaper. Um, so, 
before you, at least before you leave, I, I can take a few more questions, Nick. I think we have time. Uh, don't forget to give feedback on your way out. If you have more questions even after this talk, just come, feel free to ping me. Uh, I'll be around. Or like you can, you can contact me either via my blog or Twitter. So like, don't hesitate. I have the QR codes there. QR codes are lovely. Just saw this in a talk like on Friday. I said, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to add that. Uh, any more questions? Yes, yeah, sorry? Uh, yes, is the answer. <laughs> uh, that was the story with Open Telemetry and Application Insights. Uh, application Insights, they have like Open Telemetry is like an industry-wide thing where they were fi they finally decided to like standardize how these traces and everything is collected. And Open Telemetry has like packages for most programming languages, and one of those packages is I think it's uh, I think it's not part of the official open telemetry ones, but I think Azure has uh, an open telemetry sync. So you can take open telemetry data within your application and send it to App Insights. So for example, like I've seen people do like when they're moving between providers, you might be going from App Insights to Honeycomb or vice versa. If you're using open telemetry, you could just basically add both of those syncs and have them like have them send the data to both places at once without having to change a lot of your code. So like, if you haven't looked at open telemetry, I definitely recommend you do. All right, anyone else? All right, guess that's it then. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.